So today I happen to find another Five Below product that I think some of you guys are definitely going to like. Well, I haven't opened it yet, so we're going to test it out together for the first time. Anyway, it's called the Bass Jacks Cat. They are LED light up headphones. So instead of having the typical cat ears on the top like most headsets do, they kind of have it on the side and it lights up. So that's actually a pretty cool feature. Um, what do we have here? We're looking at three to four hours of battery life. This does have Bluetooth 5.3. USB-C, so that's always a plus when it's USB-C, so you don't have to change your cords. About two hours to actually charge this. So when it says three to four hours of battery life, that basically means if you play it up to 100% for that long period of time, it will drain it faster. Otherwise, just lower your um, volume a little bit and it'll last a little bit longer. Now, no IP rating or anything like that, which is fine. It is $5, $5.55, I believe, at five below before I actually you know, pay for all the taxes and fees and things like that. Anyway, let's get right into this review and see if this is as good as it looks. So as soon as you take it out of the box, this is everything that comes with it. And I don't know why these twist the way that they do. Maybe that's just to adjust to your head to make it a little easier. Anyway. Um, so far the headset actually looks pretty good. This is actually surprising. Now, obviously it does look pretty cheap if we're being honest here. Let me turn them on because apparently it has a LED button right here and a power button. You have your USB-C on this side. It doesn't look like there are any other type of buttons outside of those three. So for the people wondering about volume control, you are going to have to do that from your phone itself. Play and pause, probably the same thing. I do have the instructions right here, which I'll show you guys in a moment, but we'll get to that in a sec. Also, I do want to say that this does have a very, very, very short USB-C cable. I don't know why they sell them to small, but nine times out of 10, you're probably going to just use the one that comes with your actual device, your cell phone, things like that. It'll work just fine charging this. Now, um, let me hit the power button so we can just talk about it. Oh, okay, so that's cool. So this is how it looks when it's lit up. I actually think that's pretty cool. Now, they normally, like I said before in the beginning of this video, I think I said the beginning of the video, they normally sell the cat hair headphones where they sit up top. This one happens to light up so you don't need that aesthetic and it does have the cat ears right here on the side. So for the streamer girls, the streamer guys, whoever that chooses to use this headset, I think it it looks cool. I'll give it that. It does look pretty cool though. But the question is, how does it feel? But anyhow, we'll get to that part. This feels pretty soft right here. The uh, cushion, though, when I push it a bunch of times, you can definitely tell that this is going to flatten out sooner than later. It doesn't really feel like it's packed correctly. But we'll see how it feels because, you know, just because I'm pressing something, actually putting it on your head and using it is what actually matters. There is nothing else about it. The cushion is, looks like the cushion is actually sewn in right here. So kind of be aware of that. But outside of that, like I said, it's a solid looking headset. It actually has a little bit of flexibility. It doesn't feel like it's going to crack or anything when I open it. So, you know, oh wait, do I hear a noise? Ooh, I don't like that creaking. I hear a creaking already. So it might just be that I have a kind of like a defective device. That's a possibility. Worst case scenario, I'll switch it out, but I am going to finish the review with this actual headset. And as you can see, as soon as I turn it on, it went straight to pairing mode. So let's go ahead and hop over to the next section, which is how to pair this bad boy. So the syncing process is fairly easy. All you have to do is hold the power button right here, like so, I'm going to power it on. And what happens is it automatically puts itself in pairing mode. So for you people out there that might disconnect the headset or delete the one that it's connected to, it's going to automatically put itself in pairing mode. That's what it's supposed to do every time you try to sync it. So with that being said, in case you were wondering what game this was, Tales of Symphonia, one of the best JRPGs in my opinion. They have some better Tales games out there, but this is the one I'm playing right now. It's like five bucks on Steam. So I haven't played it since GameCube days. Anyway. Go to the settings. We're going to go to Bluetooth and we're going to scroll down. And what is this headset called? Oh, here we go. HP One. Oh, I keep doing too much. What's well, going to connect it? It's called the HP. Uh, here we go. HP One Three One Four Dash CT. That is the name of the headset, and it's playing right here, right now. So the sync process is very simple, very easy. It's self-explanatory, even though some people do mess up on it, which is nothing wrong. Don't feel ashamed if you mess up on syncing. Not everybody knows how to do that. Hopefully this section of the video helps you. So let's go over to the part that actually matters and then the quality of sound, which we're gonna do two sections for that one, by the way. 
So this is right here just to show you that this is in fact still connected as you can see right there. Let me just turn the volume up and down so that people can see that I'm legitimately listening to this while I do this. Now I tried a few games out with this and to see how well it can handle the sound of like gunfire in certain video games, if it can handle the audio aspect, does it break up or anything like that, I haven't had any problems. So to kind of give you an idea of what I was playing, I've played Seven Days to Die with my wife. We did the 14th Raid Day for you guys that are aware of it. Cyberpunk, I tried that. Did play a little bit Bloodstain, uh, Divinity 2. This game is like $13 on sale right now. I did actually play that too. That's one of the uh, top games that I'm playing right now. God knows how long it's going to take for me to beat it. And I'm currently playing Tales of Symphonia. Now, the last game I did try, which it gave me minor issues, was Elden Ring. What ended up happening was, you know, when you turn the Steam Deck off and then turn it back on, it doesn't automatically connect to the headset. You have to manually go into the settings, hit the Bluetooth and tap it back on or power the headset on and off. That's what happens if you use this for non phone and tablet devices. So please do be aware of that. But the sound has been on point. There hasn't been any breakages. There hasn't been any problems. Every time Lloyd yells out in a special attack, like actually I'll show you. You can see what it is I'm talking about. So if you play this, this is a JRPG, right? When you play this game, the characters are constantly talking in the background. If they're low on health, they'll let you know. And, you know, when you do certain moves in the game, it, it they every strike has a sound to it. And this picks it up immediately. Like there is no issue whatsoever with lag latency with these headphones. This doesn't have a gaming mode and it doesn't feel like it really needs one because most headphones don't. That the gaming mode is more so for hardcore players that want to be able to hear the footsteps in a Call of Duty game. You're typically using a headset that's much more high end than a five below if that's what you're looking for. But so far, they perform very well with gaming. And more importantly, we need to find out how they play with uh, music, basically, and just everyday outside life. So let's go ahead and go into the next section and try that out in real time. So I don't want to be mean when we say this, when we say this, when I say this but I don't feel like they te necessarily test out their products initially when they get it. The first thing, you know, this is a music review, but I have to say this part first. This headset right here, this piece is adjustable. So whenever you put it on your head, depending on how you put it on your head, in theory, it's supposed to sit comfortably, which it does. The problem is that this headset is very, very tight. So in order to stretch it out, just for people that aren't aware of this, you can actually put it on the edge of a box and leave it like so for like 20 minutes, an hour, a couple hours, whatever, and it will permanently be more stretched out where it's easier to fit around your head. Just a little, little pro tip for people that are interested in, in knowing something like that. Now, when it comes to quality of sound, gotta be honest, it's mid at best. Um, even though I did the part of the review for the Steam Deck, understand that my parameters for playing games are entirely different from listening to music. If you're playing Tales of Symphonia or a Telltale game or Call of Duty or whatever it is, your expectations for the quality of sound is going to be dramatically different from playing a Young Thug song or a Casanova song, a Ariana Grande, a Nicki Minaj, which I played every artist, I said, just to kind of get a range of how good this sounds. I even did some Hajime no Ippo. I did the uh, Paper Moon. It's a bunch of different stuff that I did to, to see how well this sounds. And to be honest, the bass isn't quite there. It's, to me, it's mid at best and below par and that's saying something because this is a base jacks product so it's not better than the other base jacks headphones not all of them that i've reviewed in the past uh, when it came to the music blending in together and playing background instruments and things like that that seemed to be perfectly fine the vocals was perfectly fine it was the bass that was really really lacking in this and it shows especially for songs that really require that umph to make you feel the actual music because music is subjective and this kind of ruins the experience to a certain extent I do want to also say that it kept making this popping noise every time I hit play. Well, not every time, but I would say about maybe five times out of 20, it made this popping noise when I hit pause or play, like it, the speaker was kind of going to go out. So I'm assuming that I might just have a defective pair, but I don't think that really affects the music quality itself. I just think that's just, you know, cheap ingenuity being built into the headset. But outside of that, some people will like this. Don't get me wrong, if, if you buy this and you're a person that likes the aesthetic of the light up, which I believe these actually powered off because they weren't connected, they automatically turn off, I believe. But if you look at the aesthetic, this lights up, it's not bad looking, it, it actually looks pretty cool. I think a lot of people will be gravitate toward that. And when they do hear the sound, if you're used to having cheaper headphones, I don't think it's gonna really be a big deal to you. 
I'm just speaking to you as a person that deals with, I don't know, five headsets a week. So even though I don't have the best wordplay in explaining this, I can definitely tell you that the quality is suffering. It looks like they put more into the physical aesthetic than the actual quality itself. So with that being said, you know, again, I'll leave it to you, the judge, though I will say that I can make suggestions on this channel that have better that have better headsets than this. And it's made by Bass Jacks, other brands. Anywho, let's go on to the next section, fit and how it actually sounds in real time. So let me just say this part real fast. I am walking around downtown Philadelphia and um, the feel of the headset, gotta be honest with you, it it's comfortable because the way the headset actually moves to the inside, like it actually uh, swivels, the, the earmuff right here, kind of swivels on the inside right there. So it makes it a little bit easier for different head sizes and different ear sizes to have it solidly on the side of your head. So what I will say is that the band, like when you bend it, it does make this creaking noise, which I don't really like. But outside of that, it feels fine. Now I've wore this for about, I want to say an hour and a half, and I just have slight soreness above my ear. Of course, I do kind of have bigger ears than I guess you could say the average person, so it's probably why I'm going through this. But smaller ear people, I think, would um, feel a lot better using this headset. It feels fine, it's not bad. And this actually worked as a double section because when recording, right, like you try to do some type of sound, what happens is uh, I was outside a moment ago. So you'll actually be able to determine whether it sounds good indoors or outdoors while doing recordings. And this is on the S23 FE, the phone that I actually use, because you know, I don't ever tell people to buy stuff that I don't personally use. And it's not bad, it's not bad at all. So teach your own, I'll let you guys decide. So all in all, I have to be completely honest, the headset was $5.55 after taxes, probably like six bucks and some change, right? Um, battery life is four hours, a maximum of four hours. You get three to four, depending if you have it at 100%, you'll get the uh, full four hours if it's at like maybe 70% at the highest, right? Two hours to charge or so, that's pretty much on, on brand with base jacks. You have your LED button that actually turns the lights on and off on the side, though the headset is powered off right now, and I think I talked about that. If I didn't, I did now. And you have the USB-C. Now, naturally, there are no pause and play buttons, so you will have to, you know, turn the volume control for through your phone or whatever device that you're using. So let me just say that part over again for the people that skip to, is it worth it? The sound quality when playing video games to me was a lot better because some of the games that I played didn't require me to really pay attention to a lot of the background music. What I mean by that is if you're playing Tales of Symphonia, if you're playing uh, games like Dead Space is a different story because you need to be able to hear everything around you, which it does work well with those games. Like with zombie games and things like that, I played Seven Days to Die. I was able to di dif uh, differentiate whether the zombies coming from the left or the right. I didn't have a problem with that, right? So the sound didn't really suffer. But when I started listening to actual music and podcasts where people are yelling and screaming and laughing and air horns and, and music itself with tons of bass and yelling and screaming and boom, and all this stuff, that stuff, that's corn. That's frequently released. I listen to that too. <laughs> I know it sounds nothing like the song, but you get you know the part I'm talking about. Uh it suffered in that regard where I was desiring more from the sound. And again, I'm, I'm doing this review based on Bass Jacks products. I'm not comparing it to anything else outside of Bass Jacks and other Five Below products in the same price tag around the ranges of $10 to $5 to 55 cents to $10. Because some headsets are seven, some are 10, some are $5 that outpower the other ones. This doesn't quite do that in my opinion. Now, if you get it, I think you'll like it because of the aesthetic. Personally, I think it's for people with smaller heads. Um, the earmuffs are comfortable to a certain extent, but like I said, after about an hour and a half, two hours, because I kept it on my head, I did feel soreness around the rim of my ears because I have bigger ears. And quite frankly, um, with this small cushion right here, it doesn't really do me personally any justice. For, for smaller ear people, children, you'll be perfectly fine. Just make sure you, you keep it at, like I would say, 50 to 70% volume, maximum 70. You don't really want to go any higher than that. That could damage your eardrums. Outside of that, you're good to go because there's no real safety features on this. There's no update. There's no software. It's just as is. And they're just pushing these products out. And I honestly don't think that they're doing damage control and making sure that it's good for public safety. So I, as a responsible YouTuber, have to tell you, don't play anything at 100 percent. It's going to damage your ears. Is it worth five dollars and fifty five cents? Absolutely. I don't have a problem with the headset. I don't expect the greatest sound out of bass jacks. 
I don't think you do either. So if you do get it, you shouldn't have a problem. But there are better base jacks products out there. Just letting you know in advance. Anyway, like and subscribe like always. And I will see you guys in the next video.